How's it going? This is Dylan with uh, Dylan Talks Tone and DylanPickups.com and I have been promising you a very comprehensive kind of pick material comparison. This is not really meant to be uh, you know this pick is better than this pick or we're endorsing one pick over another but the idea is uh, I believe it is my opinion we're just talking about this. This is my friend Keith Peterson I had him come because he can play more notes in less time than I can. <laughs> and when we're doing something about a pick, I don't want it to be about the player or about the anything, about just but just how it feels and how it sounds, okay? And what we were talking about before we started was it is so important to your tone, and I believe that uh, even the smallest changes, it changes how you play. So we're going to take different materials in different shapes and kind of show you uh, kind of what we're hearing and feeling, what he's hearing and feeling, or I'm hearing what he's feeling in the room. Um, some of it might not translate all the way through YouTube, uh, but we'll try to explain it the best way we can because uh, this is a really fun kind of experiment. What do you have? What do you have first? Oh, before we start, uh, we're obviously playing through the Kemper. We're using uh, Dylan Telly. Um, those are DAF pickups and we're using, believe it or not, we're using a Friedman Brown Eye Profile, um, which is a little higher gain you might think, um, but the way he's got it set up and the way it's working, you're really going to be able to understand dynamics with it. So playing harder yeah. versus softer, um, you'll, it kind of exaggerates the dynamics. Right. So with a pick experiment, that's important. So yeah. anyway, what do you got first? Um, First, I have my fingers. Yeah. Okay. You know, the picks we're born with, I guess. And I guess this will let you kind of hear how the tone is okay. without anything in the way. So. Let's give you, uh, let's start with, okay, we're going to start with a couple that people have really been giving us a lot of requests for. We're going to talk about wood first, and I'm going to put up on the screen what these are. These are from Rosebud Guitars, um, and we're going to do two different things. I'm going to show you a really thick 14 millimeter pick, and then a more conventional, traditional style pick. Um, so, actually, why don't you play the traditional yeah. one first? What's your feelings on it? Um, feeling. Feeling is it's a little bouncy. It's not it doesn't snap back. Um, like a thinner pick wood or like you know your standard Tortex you know yeah. 0.73 millimeter or something like that right um, yeah so it has a thin point it kind of tapers down you know mm -hmm. into a thinner point um, so it does resp respond pretty pretty quickly um, mm -hmm. there's no like lag or anything it's right there but but it still has a little bit of bounce to it since it is a thicker pick Okay. Um, that's kind of the common thing with the thicker. Yeah. Picks. Yeah. All right. What do you think tonally? I think it's smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth. Um, there isn't a lot of noise, you know, on the string, so it allows more for the natural tone of the guitar to come through without a lot of weird high harmonics and you know strange frequencies that aren't really the fundamental note. It's more noise from the pick that you get from like glassier kind of picks. Interesting. Um, but yeah, it's really warm, and it just kind of, you know, lets the guitar. Let's the guitar thing. do yeah. this. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we're gonna take the same concept, but we're gonna bring it to an extreme. This is a 14 millimeter thick pick. Now, this whole experiment started honestly because. He showed me, he doesn't even know this, I'm springing this on him. He showed me a five millimeter pick one day and I'm like, yeah. how in the heck can you play that? Yeah. And he's the reason, that's the reason I picked him <laughs> to do this experiment. So let's take it to the super extreme 
14 millimeters thick. All right, <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit different than five millimeters, but. <laughs> still play with a pick that's this thick it's not gonna get in the way it's just gonna feel different um, so the huge thick pick 14 millimeters sure. what do you think is what would make you pick it up off the shelf yeah so um, I would use this more so if I was in a studio like recording acoustic guitars um, so you're doing a lot of strumming you have a lot more to hold on to um, so the tone's still there from the previous pick that was, you know, a lot more of a normal size. Well, here, that we hand me that play. telly. Grab that acoustic yeah. right there. Sure. Right. Oh, it's probably in tune. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. You could get a lot of muscle on your strum and you could do yeah. some without really putting a lot of effort into it from your wrist and wrist and wearing yourself out and things like that, you know. Oh, so. that's an interesting so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which you don't really do on an electric, so, right. so really yeah. trying to get some good big percussive chords out of an yeah. acoustic, maybe that would be a yeah. practical. Mm -hmm. You know what we did not try? So from the same company, I'm trying to group them together. So this is Rosebud Guitars makes the same thing in a polycarbonate. polycarbonate yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little more clicky, scrapey yeah, sound. Yeah, right. little, um, we tried this pick on, we won't do it now, we tried it on uh, the telly earlier, and it brought out some high harmonic artifacts that yeah. were not super desirable. Right, yeah. Pingy kind of stuff. Yeah, um, and I think it especially has to do with just, um, you know, there's a lot more gain and compression, you know, the yeah. strings are thinner. Um, so the way they react to the pick, it's just going to be really chirpy and you're going to get that kind of sound from the pick and, and it's going to distract from the tone of the guitar. With an acoustic, so, that kind of percussive scrapey it's stuff, kind of you might wanted. be wanting right. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that might actually work better. Yeah. So those three selections we showed you and now he has a lot more. I'm going to put up a website and all that stuff at Rosebud Guitars. They have their place. Yeah, and I think yeah. when I posted these on the internet, people were like, "What the heck would you use those for? That's <laughs> right. so stupid." But there is a reason. There, yeah, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason for them. Very, very cool rosebud picks. Let's uh, swap back to the. Um... Actually, while you still have the acoustic, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the Coleman Custom Picks out of Georgia. He even put my name on there. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Brass. I think that's about like an 80 millimeter or a 80 thousandths. Yeah. And uh, I personally, I know it's hard on strings, mm -hmm. but I've used this for probably a couple of years and I really like it on acoustic. Yeah. It has a great sound. I mean, going back to the thicker picks as well, you also get a volume difference. Yep. You know, this is a thinner pick, and it's a lot harder than maybe the polycarbonate in the wood. Um, but the tone is is really good. So I'll tell you why I went. I he sent me this pick to try like two years ago. Uh, well, a different one. I got it. He sent me new ones. Um, but I wanted to try something harder because mm -hmm. I couldn't. When you started playing those really thick picks, yeah. I was like, well, I want to play a thick pick, but I can't hold on to the thing. So yeah. what would give me the benefit of having that super hard attack of a thick pick, mm -hmm. but the thinness right. you know, of 
of a normal 80 or whatever and this was it. Yeah, it's kind of the best of both worlds. My hands hurt the first few days <laughs> because you have to change yeah. how you attack the string so you don't get all right, scrapey yeah. and weird. Yeah. And I think this is another one that's more practical for acoustic than it is yeah. for electric, yeah. for sure. The yeah. brass picks, Coleman Custom picks out of Georgia. So brass, aluminum is another material that's a lot like this where mm -hmm. it's real. Um, actually, we have one more we should try before we put that guitar up. Right. Because let's move on from Coleman to stone guitar picks out of George, out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. These guys make carbon fiber, which I sent out to my demos mm -hmm. guys, but everybody on our experiment, but they're really cool too. But that is the kind of the, their general issue stone pick. Yeah. switch back to the telly. Yeah. I actually like it better listening to you uh, play it on the telly. Yeah. I think. When you were playing it earlier. Off oh, yeah. Strings more. yeah, it's it's a really bouncy feeling. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's sort of harder to explain any other way. But it, yeah, it almost kind of forces you, like you said earlier, um, to kind of play every single, like pay attention to every single note that you're playing. Hmm. You know. Interesting. Sound wise, it does have more attack for sure. Right. It doesn't have scrapiness like I thought it would have. I thought it'd be very. Yeah. It's almost like a middle ground between the wood and the harder materials um, because it is. It is kind of. It's warm like the wood picks, but it also still has a little bit more of an attack snap maybe. to it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. Very cool. Stone picks out of Atlanta, Georgia. We'll go ahead and put the graphic up for that. The next brand of picks that uh, sent us picks for uh, comparison is V Picks. Uh, they're out of Nashville, and um, they're made out of acrylic. Now, the interesting thing um, Vinny says from from V Picks is that because I've tried some acrylic picks before of another brand that we won't say out loud. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes things drop. Yeah. <laughs> um, I drop them yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, they, and I, I couldn't get them around them. Mm -hmm. So when he said, well, I use acrylic, I'm like, well, I drop it. And he's like, no. <laughs> he said, this is the same material that like fingernails are made out of, mm -hmm. like this stuff. And he told me when they heat up in your hand and you start using them, they get sticky. Yeah. And he is not kidding. No, yeah. I mean, they stick like yeah. it's crazy. They're awesome. I and I don't know if that other brand. It was the way I sweat or something. I, they would spin around in my fingers, yeah. and I couldn't, I couldn't hold on to them. And I've seen in some of our surveys online and stuff that other guys love those picks. Mm -hmm. But I just my body, my sweat. I don't know. I couldn't yeah. dig dig it. One of the things I want to talk about with Vinny at V Picks, and we're not going to go through every one of his picks that he has, but he is very good about engineering the shapes mm -hmm. for certain um you know for for playing metal for playing country for playing jazz and the little design elements that he puts on the edges of his picks and stuff like that um are very uh they're well thought out and they make sense yeah. so i was going to show you a couple and you didn't play this one before but i'm just going to give it to you 
he calls this his ghost edge because it makes it's thick and it's a big triangle, yeah. but it makes a like a swooshy kind of sound on the edge of the note. <laughs> Yeah. An interesting effect. It's yeah, because it's it's not chirpy, you know, like you get with a lot of picks. Um, it's almost like a totally different kind of attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He really calls it his ghost edge. Yeah. Because that's kind of the effect is that really ghost cool. that he's yeah. trying to do. I just want to show you that one really quick. This is uh, one of his. So we're talking about shapes and materials. This is his venom, which is um, a real pointy kind of jazz teardrop sort of thing. Uh, speed is yeah. supposed to be the thing with that. <laughs> It's funny because when it says what it does, it makes it, sense. Yeah, and, and it totally does the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it does the thing be. it's supposed yeah. to do. Um, all right, so while you're on speed, play his fusion. <laughs> the thing about his fusion is, um, f fusion is the same thing as metal with the tone knob all the way off, pretty much in my opinion. <laughs> um, but the edge is different, yeah. so it gives you a little softer kind of attack than that hard. Yeah. <laughs> difference between those two picks over the internet but in the room it's a much rounder yeah, yeah. softer you know what it makes me think of and you're about to play it probably <laughs> uh, not too many seconds otherwise we'll get shut off of YouTube but off of music <laughs> That's what it, yeah. that tone and that, and then not even so much the tone, but the attack of how it's right, rounded yeah. made me feel that. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's what it made me think of. All right, so I'm going to give you the chicken picker because that's what he calls it. And <laughs> you know how to do that stuff and I don't, so. <laughs> It, uh, it's a jazz three shape yeah, it's with a different longer. edges yeah. and a little longer. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me that one of the reasons is that it's shaped the way it is, so it's easy to tuck. So you can do you yeah. can go from your you know hybrid stuff back to normal playing right. like super quick, um, which makes total sense. Yeah. It does what it says it's gonna do. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, materials wise, what do you think about this acrylic stuff? Um, yeah, it's. It, it reminds me a lot, kind of like a, the Darylin material, mm -hmm. but not as slippery, because I used to use those, and they would fall out of my hand all the time. But it's it's a lot stickier, and like you said, once it heats up, it kind of 
stays in place. It doesn't move around too much, but it's not like uncomfortable. What I've also found too, I hate thick picks. Yeah. But I can play any of Vinny's picks uh, from V picks, no matter the thickness, yeah. just because they stay where they're supposed to. And the, the way he machines the edges and right. does the edges, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like a huge pick in your hand. Yeah. Even when it is, a yeah. Huge pick in your hand. Yeah. For for me, like the the pick itself is is really the edge. Like all the other stuff, that's just what you hold on to, and it, it's important. But that's where all your tone. That's what what the feeling is going to come from. At least is that mm -hmm. bevel on the on the tip, and it's and it's around the whole pick, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. This one is designed, I guess, to hold this way, but you can really hold them any way you want. And, right. Yeah, and kind of explore with that and get different different things. Speaking of holding picks any way you want, yeah. let's move on to Dragonheart. Uh, Dragonheart picks um, sent us a bunch of different stuff. And this is probably one of the bigger requested picks that we have asked of us. Um... This is in the shape of a scale, because he's a dragon guy, so it's a scale. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the things I really like about the WS75XL is it's designed to be, and we'll put close-up pictures, but it's designed to be a triangle pick and a normal pick and the blunt side of like a normal traditional style pick. But it's sized in such a way where you can hold on to it any way you want and you still have enough to hold yeah, on feel, to. It still feels like a regular pick. Either. And the material is like Delrin but better somehow. Yeah, yeah. Better somehow. Yeah. It's it's really cool. <laughs> Switch it to the rounded edge. Almost like a smoother, kind of warmer. Mm -hmm. tone. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, that's <laughs> probably one of my favorite um, to keep in your pocket. Yeah. Some of these other ones are so purpose built right. that when I'm in here doing stuff, I'll go grab them and use them. Yeah. But I think that's one of the ones I like to keep in my pocket for that same reason. So then, of course, there's this normal dragon heart shape in the same material, um, which I don't know if there's much sound difference between these two picks, except for how you hold it. Because, right. Yeah. Which um, is everything. Yeah, because within the pick itself, uh, like I said earlier, you can get, you know, three different tones not only mental. yeah yeah because it not only affects the tone but it also affects like the response of the pick as well mm -hmm. so And there's Fair practical issues. things about it. I was talking yeah. to Michael the other day, and he was saying to be able to take that hook and like tuck it up in <laughs> oh, your yeah. hand it and not perfectly. Yeah. Uh huh. You don't have to worry about it too much. You can start here. And this stuff lasts a long time. Yeah. Um, you can play this thing a really long time, and it won't wear near as fast as some of the other yeah. other stuff that's out there. Dragonheart's got a pretty interesting thing. Now, here's an interesting one. These are basically exactly the same pick. These are Dragonheart still, but this is the original one. It's got graphite in it. This is the, I forget what they call it. It's, um, I'll put the name up on the screen, um, but it's it's like a some sort of plastic nylon stuff. Looks almost like a little tex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so the interesting part about these is this is a back this will be a back to back comparison and see what you think feel wise and tone wise right. of the same exact pick. Yeah. Uh, but different material. But different material. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. 
Um, so I guess the sharpened is probably going to be more for like speed and precision. Yep. <laughs> So hopefully that was all the sides, I think. <laughs> yeah. Here, play that and just see if you can immediately be like, oh, this is... Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be a lot harder edge to it, almost, yeah. sound-wise. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... <laughs> it's just, there's no friction at all. So. <laughs> With the graphite one, it's just super yeah, slippery. Right, yeah. Yeah. To play. To play, not, not through your fingers. It, it's, it stays right where you put it. And yep. it's almost like the, the the other ones we tried where, you know, it kind of sticks in your fingers. But, mm -hmm. yeah. And it does not wear. No. He was telling me uh, when we were talking about this and he was sending me stuff, he was saying that um, some people complain. The, the, the give and take is, is it hard on your strings? versus is the pick gonna wear out. Right. But you put two materials together, something's gonna give. Yeah. And this is about as hard as you get it can get away with without doing direct damage to your strings, but right. it still lasts a super <laughs> yeah. long time. And and ultimately I'd rather have the damage done to the strings than the pick. And Would you? Yeah, especially if it's something that's gonna affect my playing and tone, I feel more so than the strings in some cases. Yeah, because you're gonna change strings. Yeah, any you string, yeah, you change strings. I mean, at least I do every every week. Um, but yeah, yeah, interesting. It depends. Well, cool, man. That's Dragon Heart picks. Um, I'll put some information about them up on the screen. Hopefully, this was informative. You know, we tried to. It's not super scientific. I'm not gonna do. Uh, gonna get out of oscilloscopes <laughs> and just look at waveforms and all that stuff because that's not how you.